This is Major League Baseball Magazine, presented by Fritos. ESPN presents Major League Baseball Magazine. This week's cover story, the school that spawned a generation of baseball broadcasters, and then some. Is Syracuse the cradle for sportscasters? Yes. We'll introduce you to baseball's most off-the-wall rookie. Just where does he come from? I don't know, some donut factory on another planet, I guess. And you'd think that a team that plays its games in Wrigley Field could come up with enough gum to keep its balls from coming unglued. That's nah, just a game. Have a little fun. This is Warner Fusell for Major League Baseball Magazine. Presented by new wild and mild ranch-flavored Frito brand corn chips. Rustle up some. Last week, us Fritos rustlers came upon a different breed. Ranch Fritos. They looked real wild, but they was actually sort of mild. Shoot, one even let Luke pet it. These wild and mild ranch Fritos have a creamy ranch flavor. No Fritos rustler can resist. Uh, but keep that under your hat, partner. Wild and mild ranch flavor Fritos corn chips. Rustle up, son. Conica knows to keep a business running smoothly, you need teamwork, timing, and communication. You can't afford to miss a beat. I'm missing page two. Your systems. No problem. Need to be efficient as well as simple, fast, and affordable. Hello? We've lost some music. Like Conica fax machines. They deliver on the spot to keep your business performing. When overnight just won't do, Conica Facsimile saves the day. High school is just like a memory because... Yeah. So I went, oh, yeah. I went waiting to see Caroline, right? No. She wasn't yeah. there. Every time I went to the prom, the girl was taller than me. I don't want to talk about it. No, I said I'd like to find a dress. So she said, is this for your daughter or for mm. your wife? <laughs> it's for my <laughs> wife! <laughs> you know why we don't talk about women? You only talk about things you know about. Levi's 100% cotton dockers. If you're not wearing dockers, you're just wearing pants. Dog pile on John! Yeah! <laughs> When you think of baseball talent and baseball stars of days to come, there's some big time schools that immediately come to mind. But if you're talking baseball announcers, one school stands alone. Syracuse University and the Newhouse School of Public Communications, the cradle of baseball announcers. Quite honestly, it's probably either the best or the best of two broadcast journalism programs in the country. And that alone attracts a large number of students. And since it is the basis for becoming a good sports play-by-play -play person, or a good sports anchor on television, we attract a large number of sports people as well, people with a sports interest. Syracuse is famous for its running backs who wore the number 44. But the list is even longer for Syracuse sportscasters starting with the venerable Marty Glickman. 
success breeds success, and it helps, uh, it, you know, feeds on itself, if you will, self-perpetuating. And I think the uh, broadcasting school at Syracuse probably in the same manner is, uh, has done the same thing, where you see uh, young guys see the successes of guys who have come out of Syracuse. They say, gee, that must be the place to go. I had two passions, broadcasting and sports. And I read in a Nick yearbook that Marty Glickman and Marv Albert had both attended Syracuse. I subsequently found out that so too had Len Berman and Dick Stockton, Andy Musser, Hank Greenwald. But it was because of the fact that Glickman and Marv had gone to Syracuse that I became interested in it. I had always heard that they had a good broadcast program up there. I had heard that even though there weren't the string of announcers that we now know today, that it was a good place to go to learn the broadcasting industry. Plus, I wanted to get a well-rounded education. In those days, you couldn't major in radio television alone. You had to have a dual major, and mine was philosophy. I mean, I've never really used my philosophy too much, except maybe in the late innings of a game where the Phillies were trailing, but uh, it was nice to have that background, and I think a well-rounded education always proves beneficial. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Blue Jays Baseball. I'm Rick Sportscasting today is a highly specialized field, and this fall, Syracuse has responded with the first-ever class that deals specifically with sports broadcasting. Okay, what does everybody think of that one? What's positive, yes. I'm real excited about this course because it's a real hands-on, nuts and bolts type of thing where the students are going to learn uh, specifically how to call the home run, how to call the long touchdown run, how to call a slam dunk, how to prepare for a sports cast, not only the play-by-play, -play, but studio things as well. These are all diamonds in the rough, and we're going to hone them and, and develop their own individuality. Live from the Sky Dome in Toronto, it's Blue Jays baseball. Students can't get by just reading prepared scripts. They have to know their sports. Professor Marinas just uh, rocks us on, on our knowledge and our facts and uh, drills us every day to be right on top of current events and sports. And he gives us practicing time to, to go over stories and we point out what things we've done wrong and what things we've done right and how we can improve. And all that time, you know, can only help you become a better sportscaster. Sportscasting, we're talking about play-by-play, -play, of course. They're going to have to develop ad-lib skills, uh, the, the ability to use the English language, to paint uh, pictures, uh, to speak extemporaneously, to get excited with the event, and to impart that excitement to their listeners and viewers. The pitch from Suter. Sandberg hits it high in the air to left field. This one's got to be a home run. Unbelievable. Ryan Sandberg has just tied this game in the bottom of the 10th. No two styles are alike, and you can't go out there and be a mimic of somebody else. That's their style. So I think if you believe in your own style and you stick it out until somebody finds some good in it, well, then you're going to be okay. Today the Cubs will try to... The class provides equal opportunity in a male-dominated profession. Every time you tell somebody, when somebody asks you, oh, what do you want to do? And I say I want to be a sportscaster, if it's a male, they kind of... You want to be a sportscaster, and you always have to prove to them, no matter who they are, how good you are, you have to prove to them that you know what you're talking about. And there's a little bit of satisfaction when you do prove to them that you do know what you're talking about. In the past, the campus radio station equated sports with the likes of Tony Orlando. WAER was a progressive radio station. And there was sometimes a clash of sensibilities between those of us who wanted to be newsmen and sports guys and those who were sitting there uh, stoned half out of their minds playing the Grateful Dead for 47 consecutive hours. They greatly resented it when I would break in for three minutes to give sports scores. I never had one person tell me they ever heard me on that station. I mean, I'm not sure that even the students could get it. And that station's still there today. I hope the kids are making out better than we did. They are, thanks to a new philosophy and technology that gives students a hands-on supplement to the classroom. Fernandez, a one-man show for the Mets. I really think good sportscasting is a knack rather than an acquired skill. But I think if you do have that innate ability, you can be helped to polish it. You can be helped to focus and develop that skill. And really what a sportscasting class can do within college is help people be realistic. If 100 people come to that class with hopes of being sportscasters, probably 75 or 80 of them should walk away with the realistic notion that they haven't got it. And then the other 15 or 20 can go on about trying to polish the natural ability they have. 
One place to start polishing is in the minor leagues, and many a student has dreamed the big time while watching the Syracuse Chiefs. The very first time I did a baseball game was right here at MacArthur Stadium in Syracuse. As a matter of fact, uh, just sitting in the stands with a colleague with a tape recorder and a microphone, just doing the game in the stands, and a sports writer happened to notice us, did a story on us. The general manager of the Syracuse Chiefs saw the story, called us and asked us if we wanted to do it from the press box for real, and that's how we got started. Through the years, many have come through, and, and uh, one that comes to mind was uh, Bob Costas, you know, doing it in the stands. Uh, so right there, it proves, you know, he's a dedicated person to, to his field, and when the people that uh, did get together in the Syracuse Chiefs broadcast booth uh, were people like Sean McDonough, and Bob Black at Richmond, and our own Dan Hord. I was fortunate that the guy that preceded me, Sean McDonough, who now is the television voice of the Boston Red Sox, did a great job while he was a college student, and I think as a result, Tex was willing to give me a chance while I was a senior at Syracuse. It's an unbelievable opportunity. I'm probably one of a handful of guys my age doing triple A ball and this is my fifth year so uh, you know I owe it all to Tex. But for all the polish the graduates still credit the school. I heard Dick Stockton say once who is a part of the Syracuse regime of broadcasters he said Syracuse is to broadcasting what Notre Dame is to football and I think that pretty much sums it up. If I could even somehow match what Marv Albert has done in his life or even Sean McDonough with the Boston Red Sox that'd be half the battle right there. I've, I've made it already. So the precedence has been set. It's just a matter of trying to match it and even trying to top it. Lofty goals for young announcers. Some will make it, some won't. Hey, Warner, you had one good thing going for you. You are a broadcaster for the Richmond Braves, but you will never, never make it. You're not a Syracuse University graduate. Good luck, pal. Buying jewelry for me is a personal thing. In the news, Cubs win, Cubs win, which meant they had a lot of time and gum on their hands while playing out the string. I see the baseball on the road. <laughs> Hit somebody in the head. Drops right on Sean Dunstan's head. Well, you can have a little fun when you've wrapped it up, although I don't think Dunson thinks it's all that much fun. As any division champion will tell you, knowing when to have fun is all in the timing. How long do you suspect it takes him to get from the bullpen to the mound? 11, 11-1. 11-1, one. One, that technical about it? Well, let's take a look. We have the gun on him. Keep in mind, Johnny said 11-1. Well, 11, 11, 11 can he be? somewhere close. Look at that. Oh, he gets my. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That that would have been a world record, a new world record, but it is when made it. When a player checks his swing, the catcher has the right to ask the base ump if he went around. But when it's a catcher who is hitting, that scenario can be a lot less appealing. Here's an interesting I've, situation. I've never seen that. Valley, the catcher, who is hitting now, asked the home plate umpire to check to see if he swung because the home plate umpire, Voltaggio, said he did. <laughs> well, that's too late then. <laughs> Valley wanted to appeal to the first base umpire, umpire to change the strike call. <laughs> Come on, Dave. <laughs> that's work. not how it works. But there's nothing like the mass confusion these folks can create. Well, there are all, always a lot of interesting people in California that come to the games, and that is uh, that's Alan Alda and Indiana Jones and President Bush. And the bat thing. And they're here. And the bat thing. And that hex thing that Tom Kelly does also has its mimics. Rick Rennick is getting into Tom Kelly's actor. He's jinxing the opposing hitters. That's just a game. Have a little fun. And it wasn't such a bad year to be two years old and in Baltimore. He's only two years old. Denton, Denton, tell me this. Who is your favorite Oreo? Frank. Frank Robinson. Frank Robinson? <laughs> tell, tell me what happens with Frank Robinson when he comes out and argues with the umpire. Yeah, man. 
<laughs> and what does your dad do for the Orioles? Party. His dad's one of the Oriole birds, by the way. Mom, he's one of the quickest little kids I've ever seen. Yeah, maybe you want to ask him some questions that you know he's ready for. Who's, who's the player right there, Dan? Who's that right there? The number 14. Right there, the Oriole catcher. Mickey. 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 Mickey Very good. Mickey. Mickey Tebble. <laughs> One more time. Let's see how Frank Robinson argues with the umpires. Go ahead. <laughs> a poet, a singer, a musician, a pitcher. He's, he's kind of a weird character, you know, he's a little bit of everything. One day he'll come down really quiet, and the other days he'll come down yelling his poetry as the skies are blue and start yelling. So he's a, as a roommate, he's very strange. You don't even have to tell me his name. I know who you're talking about right now. Wetland has got to be one of the wackiest people I've ever met in a game, and it's great to find somebody else in this game that can act like that. Rookie John Wetland has a deadpan delivery and a cosmic understanding of the balls and strikes of life. I like to enjoy a lot of things. I think that, that uh, it all helps. As much knowledge as I can gain about anything um, helps me become a more complete person. Um, very seriously, that's, that's, that's the way I am. And a lot of that encompasses being a little bit out there. Uh, I'm not afraid to tread on new ground. John's a pitcher by trade, but while out there, he's managed to strum up a few other pursuits. I picked up guitar about four years ago and just started playing around with it. I'm self-taught, you know, uh, nothing uh, really special. A lot, of, a lot of guys get a kick out of it uh, about the stuff I play. I play anything from classical to punk rock and, you know, just I have a good ear. I was blessed with a good ear and so I was able to do it. He claims he plays uh, Stairways to Heaven, but to tell you the truth, it could be any song. I, you know, he just plays it loud, that's all I know. John also gets a lot of feedback from his poetry. Here, then, is a sample. I lie awake, thinking of the void that I cannot control. I beckon the void, fulfilling a thought, yet it does not answer in presence or being. Staring blankly at a sheet of music, being unable to read it, knowing that it's there and exists, yet not hearing a sound. My thoughts dwell in lingering sadness, and yet complete happiness prevails beneath, life itself becoming the altar of sacrifice. And though I understand, still I lie awake. It's only natural that John would make a lot of friends along the way, including an eight-legged one in the bullpen. I saw the spider there, and I asked how it was doing, and, and uh, asked if it was hungry, and went and caught a fly and gave it to him, and found out about the eighth inning. I was back down in the, in the dugout here, but found out in the eighth inning that he finally went for it. So I was happy that he ate. This is where I used to sit in the bullpen. That little friend up here in the corner, a little spider. Actually, he's a large spider. And it doesn't look like he's, he's in right now, because they probably, they probably painted right over it. John's approach might seem strange in the baseball world, but there's a method to his madness. I believe that, that it helps it helps me have a good release. It's a, it's a positive release. It's a healthy release for uh, the stress and the pressure of the game. Our stat of the week zeroes in on the New York Yankees, who this year featured 50 players on their roster, the most in baseball since 1969. Pulled by Milligan. Bam Bam makes a play. What a chance by Bam Bam Ewers on a tough hop off the bat of Randy Milligan. And he rips a face hit. Holy cow. Well, he broke in just the way he wanted. Well, he feels uh, very, very good now. When you get that first base in the new uniform, you can really loosen up and go on and have a good year. The problem with using 50 players when you've already retired 12 numbers is that sooner or later, your numbers are up.
The National League Championship Series starts this week inside Wrigley Field. But at Wrigley, the cameras can look outside the park as well. And that's where the real action takes place. There are great seats in the ballpark, not in the ball field, but outside. Look at that, that place. They got the awning up. They got the beach tables out in the back. That smells good. There you are. Room with a view. How about that? On the rooftop, all by himself. Don't jump, pal. They're on the roof. They're watching us, watching them, except nobody knows that we're watching them. Come on, get out of the way, number two. <laughs> uh, well, leaning out of the window, making sure the sun hits her, and still watching the ball game on the TV set. Yeah, how are you? Hello. They're watching the ball game on top of a car outside the ballpark. Not everybody's watching the ball game. That guy is more of a painter than a Cub fan. The painter is making sure he doesn't miss a single pitch. I'd like to be paying him by the hour, Harry. <laughs> He's sent for anything that may happen. He can get into any door in Chicago. There they are on horseback. <laughs> Little accident, but everything seems to be fine. There's a fire someplace. Looks like some sprung a leak out there. Fire department's got a problem. This hydrant's for you. <laughs> <laughs> They're cooling off the street from the rooftops. Not only do we have fans inside the park, we have them out of the park as well. Even the dogs are watching the Cubbies. Well, that's a funny sight. It's gonna be a very surprised fan when he comes out after this one. You just can't get away from the office, can you? It's hard to get reservations at the restaurants downtown this time of year. He pulled that all the way from Louisiana to see this one. Volleyball. <laughs> the war is over, by the way. He's been flying around for a long time. All right, you put it in reverse. Here we go. Oops. I'm not going to make the angle. That's trying Maybe. to... Maybe. Looks nope. like it's trying to stuff about 10 pounds of sausage into a five pound case. There is the Spider Man of Sheffield Avenue right there. Waiting for little Miss Muffet to emerge from the <laughs> apartment building. He's still trying to get in there. There'll be some extensive damage to the two cars in front and back of him, but he's going to get in that spot. Now, the question is will he ever get out of it? There, the Spider Man is back. He was over there yesterday terrorizing the neighborhood with that spider. And the finale, he did it. There's an old nursery rhyme with a modern day ring. The cubbies may roar and the blue jays may sing. And though Stuart is nimble and can Seiko be quick, they can't get the jump on the Giants at Candlestick. I've got a good reason Why I'm feeling so good The Giants are home today And they're winning like I knew they could On the, the home of the Giants That's where the hopes run high The home of the Giants where Frisco's gonna show the world I'm taking my chances I'm skipping work today If the boss ever catches me I'll have the devil to pay At the, the home of the giants That's where the hopes run high the home of the Giants, where Frisco's gonna show the world. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. The home of the Giants, where Frisco's gonna show the world. Bum, bum, bum. On 
deck for next week, our minor league show, featuring a New York publisher who proved you can go home again. I wanted to do it. I had the chance to go out and do it, and I did it. And I know that anybody over the age of 30 who's ever said to himself that, you know, just give me one more crack at this, and I'm sure I can do this. I know that's the guy that can understand completely this experience and what it meant to me. This is Warner Fusell. Major League Baseball Magazine is presented by new wild and mild ranch-flavored Frito brand corn chips. Rustle up some. <laughs> <laughs>